guys, welcome back to my channel, hope you're doing well. So as you can probably tell from the title, this is all a video about planning a Disney trip for a novice, first time someone planning it. Um, although I've been to Disney before, um, I went when I was a child so I never planned the, planned the trip, so this is, was a completely new thing for me. Um, and I found there was no information in one place for planning being someone from the UK. So I wanted to put it all into one video, try and make it uh, as easy as possible for you. And I'll add links below of all the websites that I found that were really helpful, any YouTubers that I followed and Instagrams, people that just helped ease me into the Disney planning. So I'm going to start with how I booked the trip. So I knew when I was planning on going and I had read online that around the time I was going is when they normally offer Disney free dining. I heard from other people that to book Disney um, dining like free was really hard um, because it was quite sought after and people would like jump on it straight away and it was very hectic and like, really hard so for me that just kind of overwhelmed me and I didn't want that pressure so I found um, a holiday place that booked it for me and they were called Holiday Hamster I'll leave their website linked down below um, they seem to like specialize in Disney trips and they knew what they were on about so I was really happy with that and she said she would take care of everything, that she would book the free dining and that it would all be part of my deal. So I was super, super happy about that. One thing um, I was aware of beforehand though was what hotels I wanted to stop in. As I knew I wanted to stop in a Disney one. Definitely, if you want to stop in a Disney one, do your research beforehand. I would recommend watching sort of tour videos on YouTube of each of the um, hotels and you'll be able to find out what the hotels are on the Disney website. I'll also leave a link below so you can go straight to the hotels if that's easier for you. So hotels are all booked, your trip is booked, what do you do next? So for me, I was unsure sort of on rides, what was happening anymore, because it had been a couple of years since I, well, it's been over 10 years since I last went. So on the Disney website, you, they actually have a free planning tool um, and you can order the Disney, a Disney My Experience book. So it's called The Little Big Book of Magic and it looks like this and it's free and they send it directly to your house. It's great. So I'll leave a link for the planning tools down below as well because they're great. Um, but within the book, it tells you... Uh, all about the Disney parks. It also tells you about the Disney Resort, so it might be a good one to order beforehand uh, if you want to have a quick look at the resorts before you book. It tells you about Disney dining and then other stuff about the adventure. So what I was really using this book for was the rides. So what I've done here is I've marked just starred next to rides that I thought were interesting. And any rides which I um, didn't remember going on or any rides that I thought were new from last time I went, I just kind of had a little Google online. Again, YouTube will be your best friend. I had a look to see whether there was any videos of rides on there and I just put stars next to them. So that's all I did, nothing too extreme, just added little stars next to what I thought were interesting. So once I knew kind of what rides I wanted to go on, I started my spreadsheet. So I'll um, show you a video sort of here of what the spreadsheet looks like. I've gone very intense on my spreadsheet. I have um, my time timetable of the day. I've got addresses of certain places that we want to go to because we're going to Kennedy Space Center and national parks and stuff. So I needed to make sure I had those addresses. I've also done a fast pass one and then food I'd like to try, but I'll come on to them too later. So in terms of the timeline, I am stopping at three different hotels. So on my timeline, I have the date and what hotel I'll be at. And from there, I sort of planned without really knowing. It's hard to, to start with. I knew I liked Animal Kingdom and I had quite a bit of interest in quite a lot of the rides there. So I planned sort of a day for Animal Kingdom and a little bit more because I thought I'd like to go back to that park. 
But then I started to plan, this day I'll go Magic Kingdom, this day I'll go Epcot, this day I'll go Animal Kingdom, just stuff like that, sort of where you think it will go, because it will definitely change, but it's good to just sort of get a first rough idea. Another thing to take into consideration is any seasonal holidays around that time. So although we're going in September, it's very close to Halloween, and Disney like to extend out their seasonal holidays as far as possible. So when we actually go in September, they will have Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party on, because this does change the days that we'll be going to the parks. With Disney Not So Scary Halloween party being on one night, it meant they would be closing the park early and the, the happily ever after fireworks wouldn't be on that night. I planned to go to Magic Kingdom on that night, so I had to shuffle my days around. But that's the kind of thing you'll have to look into. I just sort of googled Mickey Not So Scary Halloween Party and had a look at what the dates were to book the tickets. So then I worked out which days it wasn't going to be on. It's very confusing, but definitely think about holidays that will be on around that time, whether they have anything on for Christmas or like 4th of July, because that's obviously a big event for them out there. But yeah, it's definitely something to think about. So you have your holiday booked, you know where you're going, you kind of know a rough idea of what parks you're going to go to on what day. So what next? What do you do next? Well, if you're stopping in a Disney resort, you can book your food and dining reservations 180 days out from your trip which is amazing like that's so far in advance and quite scary to think what do you what will I want to eat on that day um it depends what you've booked in terms of dining and whether you've booked dining or not so as I booked quick service dining plan there wasn't really much I could book because quick service ones you just sort of turn up the only one I have booked is Belle's Castle, the Beauty and the Beast sort of Be Our Guest restaurant. And I've booked that for the morning for breakfast and that is quite a popular one. So it's worth sort of having a look because they do a lot of character meet and greet meals as well. If your dining package is table service, then you probably will want to book a lot of your table service restaurants in and that will probably start to mark down which parks you're in by where you're booking your table at. So that's why it's a good idea to have the rough, a rough plan of where you'll be each day. So sticking on the topic of food, I, um, as I mentioned on my spreadsheet, I have a tab all to do with food. I follow a lot of Disney blogs already and it, on Instagram I follow a lot too. So a really good one on Instagram is Disney Food Blog, I'll leave them linked below. But they take amazing photos of food that's in the park. They also have a YouTube channel as well, so I'll leave that below too. Um, but they give you amazing suggestions of food to try, what's good on a budget, how to get your the most money out of the quick service dining plan. They have so many useful tools on their YouTube channel. Definitely, definitely, definitely watch them because it will give you more of an insight onto Disney food and what's actually available for you. So we have pretty much everything sorted. We know where we're stopping, we know when we're going to the parks and we have our reservations sorted. So now the dreaded fast pass. So with fast passes, you can book these 60 days in advance, I believe, and they can be very stressful. So what I did beforehand, as we mentioned, was I put the stars in the book here of the ones that I wanted to go to. But with Disney, it's never easy. They have tiering systems. So in Animal Kingdom, the two Avatar rides that are quite popular are in tier one, where the rest of the rides in are in tier two. You can only pick one ride from tier one and two for tier two. So each day you can pick three fast passes, but once you've used them, you can rebook again once you're in the park. So what I did then was worry like, well, what's in what tier, what's in what tier, I don't know. I found an amazing website called Budget Mouse. I'll leave their link below too, because honestly, it helped me so much. This is the bit where I really, really struggled. Um, and they sort of said, these rides are in tier one, these are in tier two, and they did it for every park, and I found it so helpful. So 
what I did then was sort of prioritise the order of rides that I wanted to go on and what I wanted from tier one, what I wanted from tier two and any others in case they weren't available. I haven't yet got to that day to book my fast passes but I know what I want and I know what days I'm going to be at, I want to be at each park. One thing I've read and obviously wouldn't recommend is don't book your fast, fast passes for straight away in the morning. Get to the park early and you can get on those rides straight away. The best time to book your fast passes is from around 10 till lunch till about 2. That's when people are mostly in the parks and that's when it's going to be at its busiest time. I also found a really brilliant website all to do with the dining service plans and this website tells you which restaurants are all included in quick service which ones are included in table service and then I think there's is it deluxe or something so and it, it just tells you every single one so I found that really good you could click through to it and see the menu as well and so if you really really wanted to um, plan out the whole trip you could plan out well that restaurant's next to that ride so I'm gonna have that so yeah, you can really go to town with your planning if you wanted to. Again, I'll leave that link down below. So that is sort of a quick guide on how to plan Disney trips. If you'd like to know more about how I plan my Disney trip, what I'm going to pack in my park bag, what I'm going to pack in my suitcase, let me know and I'll definitely do those videos for you. I'm going to try and be as plastic free as possible while going to the parks. So being on the quick service dining plan, I'll be taking reusable cutlery and a bottle and stuff. So if you'd be interested to see what kind of things I'll pack in my rucksack for those days, give this video a thumbs up and I'll definitely do that for next time for you. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Bye.